Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of Steve's. And today, chums, I'm going to be hitting up a little bit of No Man's Sky. Yeah, that game right there. And as you can see, I'm standing by my Starborn Runner ship. I guess I am. And we're going to be looking at what the Starborn Runner can do, whether I feel it's a good ship. I mean, I'm not really a min-maxer, so stats to me don't mean too much. It's what they do in actual physicality that I'm interested in. So let's jump on over into game. And let's have a look at my Starborn Runner. So here we go. Here's my Starborn Runner. And here's the stats right above my noggin right here. So you can see there my damage potential is what? At 404? No, 400, well, 440. Shield strength, 387. Hyperdrive range, 1626. And maneuverability, 1547. So what do those numbers actually mean? Well, uh, good question. Well, anyway, uh, let's have a look at my modules. So I've, I've actually gone for the Infra Knife. I find that the Infra Knife is the best at melting Sentinel ships and also taking out Pirate Dreadnoughts. So hopefully we can come across one of those and shoot the shite out of it. I've also got some rockets in here. I've also gone with the Photon Cannons. I took out the Phase Beams completely entirety. I've put inside of the scanners and I've also put in a cargo scan deflector if I want to do some smuggling. And yeah, I've got lots of room for smuggling if I want to smuggle in this ship. I'm, I'm hoping this ship is going to be good planet side for whizzing about on planets. Um, I might go to a planet that's got really deep caves and try and fly it through a cave. Yeah, because I'm slightly tapped. Um, but first of all, let's just jump in the old ship. Here we go. I do like that sound. <laughs> Very cool. And then we're taking off. And I do love the actual sort of like under sort of whatever that is. The vertical thrust system. And looking at this ship, I mean, it, it is quite a beautiful ship. If we've got the sun in the right place. I mean, look at it. It is freaking fantastic. You can see there I've changed the trails at the back to red. Because I'm more into red, white and black for my logo design. Now, something that I'm not overly keen on is the fact that the engines are a deep purple. It'd be nice if you could make them at least match your uh, Starship trails that you go for, or if they automatically adjusted. I would like to see those in red if I could, of course. Or I'd like to have the Starship trail that matches the under sort of, you know, the, the weird sort of stuff that you get from the underside. The underside of this ship is quite interesting. If I can put the sun down there, it's got all sort of like warning signs and stuff under the underside. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't want this thing landing on you of all that vertical takeoff, would you? You know, quite frazzled your old hair, your old barnet. I do like the decals on this, not that I can overly read any of them. I mean, what the fudge does that say when it's at home? Yeah, that's a bit blinking weird, isn't it? Yeah, can't work that one out. But I do love the little racing decal here. Yeah, people have pointed out that it looks a little bit like the Joe Danger helmet, which it does. I guess it does. Anyway, so, pulse-wise, how well does this thing pulse? Let's give it a bit of a pulse, shall we? Okay, here we are, and pulsing. Nyaam! Pretty standard. Pretty standard, to be honest. Not meant, not seeing anything super special about that, no. So, anyways, I'm going to fly back into the old station, and I'm going to hit up a teleporter terminus, and I'm going to go to a planet that's got very interesting caves, and we're going to try and fly this ship through some caves. Yeah, I know. Insane, right? And then after that, I'm going to go and look for a Sentinel Dreadnought. And we're going to see how quickly we can melt said Sentinel Dreadnought. Okay, all right. So we've got a couple of things to do. We get on with it. Okay, chums, here we are at my Diplo planet. Now, there are Diplos on this planet, hence why it's a Diplo planet. But not only that. I've actually built a base here that is like a giant mechanised Diplo. It's quite near to a colossal archive. I really like the placement of this one. But if you do want to come to this planet and try and fly through caves yourself, please try and build a base far away from mine, you know, like 4,000 U's or something. Don't build right by it. Um, but there you go. There's the portal code. If you want to come here, this is inside of the Euclid Galaxy. This was actually discovered by Moose Gaming. If you haven't hit up Moose Gaming, he is a content creator. Does some awesome content. Uh, check him out. But anyway, let's hit this up and let's take to the sky. Let's see if we can find a cave to fly into and probably die. Oh, that nearly rhymed, didn't it? Okay, this could be quite good fun. Uh, let me find a cave. Sadly, a storm has rolled in, so it makes spotting the caves... A little bit tetchy. Yeah. 
Okay, chums, well, this isn't quite a cave, but um, there's quite a cool sort of watery area down here. And you can sort of fly through this, so let's just spin it around. This is my little crab base right here. If I just spin this slightly, hopefully I'm going to find the right overhangs. Hmm, it's a little bit cloudy to see, but we'll we'll give it a go. So here we go. Look, we we'll fly down here. We we'll try and fly through this cave down here, and then through the next one. So this planet is full of these crazy sort of floating rocks as well, and these awesome sort of little narrow cave wells inside of here. Now I found this a lot easier to do inside of my Sentinel ship. I'm not going to lie. You can see here, I'm already scuffing the heck out of my paintwork. Goodbye, lovely decals. All right, let's go through here. Decals. Uh, oh, we're not going through that. Okay. All right, we'll find a proper cave to fly in, but this could be where I blow my ship up, people. <laughs> I really need to wait for this cave. Oh, hold on. There's another, there's another little recess down here. Let's go down there. Let's go down here. Flying in caves that have got water in is never a clever idea. But I've never claimed to be clever. Okay, right. Oh, fudge in heck. Fudge off, mate. I'm trying to do something seriously dangerous, and now I've got sentinel ships homing in on me. Okay, well, this is going to make it even more fun, isn't it? Ah, you get back! Oh, no, I've got, I've got the dialogue. Dialogue popped up. Refuse to comply. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the actual stuff is clearing now, but let's take on these sentinel ships. Let's just see how good they freaking are, shall we? Come on, then, you get bags. Interrupt me when I'm doing stuff. Take that. That's your shield's gone. <laughs> Kaboom! You're dead! Alright, right, we're going into this cave. Let's see if that works. I don't even think this is a cave. Alright, well, um, we've made the decision now. We're down. Here we go. Yeah, this is a lot easier to do in my sentinel ship. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Because the sentinel ships, you can turn those on a dime. Okay, I'm inside a cave right now. And... I better get out of the cave. Okay, so it is it is possible to fly into the caves. As you can see here, though, it's a little bit dangerous. Dangerous. Thank you, guys. Captain Steve, the man of danger. You know what? I have actually got another planet that's got loads of rings all over it, which is a really cool, a really cool planet for for um for sort of like testing the maneuverability of ships. But these caves are usually really deep and really complex. I've, sadly, I've just come across a few shallow ones at the moment, but we're, we're flying to this cave. This cave looks terrible. Okay, right. Okay, follow me, sentinel ships, into this dead end. Holy fudge. Oh, no. That was a mistake. Right, we'll just land. Okay, maybe we won't. Phew. Yeah. All right. Well, I need to get out of the ship. I'm going to get away from these sentinels, and I'm going to take you to my ringed planet. And we'll do another flight test on the ringed planet, okay, people? All right. This could be fun. Right, let's just get out of here. Meow. Dun, dun, da, 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 Mission Impossible music. Heck yes. There we are. Oh, great. I can't actually call the ship while I'm in combat. Let me sort this out, and I'll see you on my ringed planet. Okay, chums, well, I've arrived, Kated. This is my dro my droid nanite farm planet. And as you can see, it's got all these groovy, like, Sonic the Hedgehog rings all over it. And the nice thing about this planet, it's not in chromatic metal-y colours. It's got shed loads of bases here already. It's got droids that you can feed and get chewy wires, which you can turn into nanites, hence why it's called my nanite farm. And I think it even occasionally has um, the odd worm that might jump out on this planet. Anyway, here's my ship over here. You can see this is my base here, and somebody else has built a base right next to my base. If you are to build bases, try to build them away from other people's bases. This one is quite a clustered sort of um, planet, to be fair. But even still. Now, I've already took my Sentinel ship on this planet before. And my Sentinel, my Sentinel ship was freaking awesome for flying through these rings. Now, I did put in the drift mechanic on this ship. And it does drift quite nicely. I would say this ship is more fun to fly than my Sentinel sort of fighter on this planet. But I think my Sentinel fighter has got more control. I mean, this is definitely my drifting ship. I mean, look at that drift. It's freaking insane. It is fun. This is a fun ship to fly on here, whereas my Sentinel ship is more of a precision ship. But yeah, very cool. 
it, it feels quite nice to fly here. I'm at full freaking bore at the moment, though. That's doing 298 U's per second on this planet. And uh, just for comparison reasons, let me bring in my Sentinel ship. So we've got up to 298 U's there. But with the drift in, I was having a few little mini impacts. But let's just land. Let's just jump on out. Let's just call in my Sentinel ship quickly. Just for a quick comparison. Okay. Here we go. Boom. And uh, where's my Sentinel lovely super duper shifty ship? There it is, right there. Chicka boom. Okay, I'll show you the stats on this puppy. It's freaking lovely. So there you go, here's the stats here. And you can see here the maneuverability. My other ship was at 1500. This one's at 1300. So potentially, it sh its maneuverability shouldn't be as good. Right? Okay, let's give it a go. Let's take to the skies on this one. Chicka boom. And we'll see if it hits. Look, it's already doing 363 U's per second. It's already a faster ship. And this this one hasn't got the drift mechanics. And it it, it you, you can tell it hasn't got the drift mechanics. But it, it's pretty darn freaking quick. It's quicker than my um, Starborn Runner. And I would say it's more sort of like on point when it comes to exactly where you're going to be flying through. And you've got that little bit more of control. Look at that. Freaking lovely jubbly. If I was going to enter a race, this would be the ship I go in. It wouldn't technically be the Starborn Runner. Because you can see there I'm hitting like 300 U's with ease. 365. Starborn Runner gets up to 298 and then bottoms out. This thing will beat it hands down in a race. Okay. Well, there you go. That's, that's my actual um, Sentinel ship. The Sentinel ship is faster, it can hover in place, and it can turn on a freaking dime. I would say that's far better than the Starborn Runner. But another one for comparison is, you know, the Utopia Speeder was supposed to be, you know, a speedy ship. This one I'm really not impressed with. The Starborn Runner, I think, is better than this Utopia Speeder. But let's just see, because I can't remember what the top end of this one is. There we go, let's hit this up. But that one bottoms out at 29495. It might hit 296 like the Starborn Runner, but this feels very on par with what I'm experiencing with the Starborn Runner. I didn't put the drift mechanics in this one, and as you can see here, it's not as much fun as the Starborn Runner. But yeah, I'm not overly impressed with the Utopia Speeder, and it's not very speedy. It really isn't. There we go. So there you go. That's my sort of like little bit of a uh, flying too fast. <laughs> That's my little comparison of some of the fastest ships inside of No Man's Sky. Now, my little droid fighter. Let me just show you my little droid fighter. So this is my little droid. Oh, no, I haven't put all the modules back into that one. We'll use the um, we'll use the void, the runner of the void. Let me just check that I have actually put all the modules back into this one. Yes, I have. Well, they're all back into place. But you can see here the maneuverability, yeah? 1,297. So it shouldn't be as good as the actual Starborn runner. In fact, I don't think I've finely tuned all this one because you can see half of its modules are still sitting down here as well. But we'll give this one a crack. This one, I think, is even slower than my Utopia Speeder top end. But I just love this ship. This ship just has got a nice feel to it. Look at that. It's only doing 256 U's. But because of that, it's kind of like the turtle. In, you know, like the hare and the turtle in a race, you know? It's just a gentle ship. If you want position, you sacrifice a bit of speed. If you've got a really gnarly race course, like you're flying through caves or something like that, where you need that extra little bit of control, yes, you might need to go a little bit slower. But if you want pinpoint accuracy to where you're flying, the Alpha Vector, for me, is a nice ship for that. But, yeah, it's not as fast as the Starborn Runner. The, the, I find the fastest ships. The fastest ships are the Sentinel ships. Like, I, 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 maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you've got a faster ship than that. Or oh, I haven't tried exotics. I haven't seen what the top end of my exotic is. Let's just bring him in. Now, obviously, I haven't gone min-maxing crazy on this. It's like, I mean, look at the maneuverability on this one. It says it's like 943. I built this mainly for hyperdrive range. So this thing, 
might be even better than my Alpha Vector when it comes to pinpoint accuracy. But I bet the top end on this is pretty darn freaking slow. So here we go. Uh, I can't, oh yeah, 259 U's. It is. It's like flying Miss Frickin' Daisy. But at the same time, pinpoint accuracy, if you're after pinpoint accuracy, maybe a nice little guppy is the sort of thing for you. But there we go. Done. That's that sort of test done. My last test is how good it is at melting a sentinel sort of dreadnought or a, or a freighter come to think of it. So I'm just going to jump systems. I'm going to jump to a pirate system and hope we get a pirate dreadnought. But if we get a normal freighter interaction, I'd love to see how quick it melts a normal freighter, to be honest. So, you know, where's my old starborn runner? Where are you? There you are. And we're going to take this out. We're going to give it a go. Now, I've already done up my, um, my sentinel ship for melting sentinel dreadnoughts. So this is more of a this is a secondary ship to my Sentinel ship. The Sentinel ship, I feel, is my best ship. And that's my my ship that I'm going to take on missions. Like, this just looks fancy, you know? Anyway, let's see if we can find a pirate system. And, uh, yeah, it's going to take me a little while, probably, to find a pirate system, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, I've got both... Oh, look, that actually tell a lie. There's one right there. We're on our way, people. I guess. Well... Sadly, we didn't get any sort of interaction here. Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> that was not obvious. All right, well, here we go. Let's uh, fly on down then. Let's take out all the engines on the back end of this thing. Hold on. I, I, is that the rear or is that the front? This is weird. It's brought me in at the front, people. All right, fine. Well, we better take out the engines so it doesn't get away. Hold on. Actually, no, it did take me in at the rear. What the flying fudge? All right, well, this has really thrown me, people. It wasn't obvious that we had to... Oh, there's all the engines tucked under this sort of, like, little lozenge. All right, here we go. Let's take these out. Going to use the old infra knife. Going to have to get in really close to these. Boom! Look how quickly it melts that. Freaking devastation. Sweet! Okay, we'll fly around this way. Fly over the top of the hull. Bring me in behind the cannons. Get in through the shields. And there we go. Goodbye, cannon. Smash this cannon. Take that. I usually miss one at this bow end. That's the bow end. I always get mixed up with the bow and port. I think the bow is like the, the back and the port is the front, isn't it? There we go. Let's take that one out. I usually just spin it around. Oh, have I lost my shields already? There we go. I knew I'd miss one. I always do. I don't know why. Here we go. I think that's all of them now. Is that all of you? Yeah. How? That's for shooting me. Right, okay. Well, it done it quite quick. I mean, some of that was my own foolishness. But yeah, oh, we've got the middle lane again. Coolio. And we'll run on up to the hull of this thing and just... Ah, I get the bounty for it. Might as well, might as well. Might as well collect whatever I can get for this. Wouldn't be funny if it was an S-Class and I've got myself a bit of a quandary there. It's a C-Class. So, yeah, I, I really don't know. I mean, I've got a really cool freighter as it is. You know, my, my freighter over here. I'll just show you my freighter. I've called it the Red Dwarf, and it's got one of these turny-wurny wheels at the front of it. And you can see all the stats for my freighter up there. I mean, it's nothing amazing, but it took me ages to get all the bulkheads. It took me ages to get all this kitted out. I like my freighter as it is, and I honestly don't feel I'm going to do the trade, even if it comes up. Even though I do love the, how the uh, decks of this looks. And it is very red and in keeping with um, my colour scheme. Hello, mate. Oh, yeah, I just want the bounty, matey. Yes, demand tribute. Here goes. Thank you very much. Don't mind if I do. Lovely jubbly. That's a good way to earn some cashola, isn't it, that? And a fun way at that, to be fair. All right, OK, well, um, that's pretty much that. I think that's pretty much the testing of the Starborn Runner done and concluded. It's not a bad ship as way as fighters go. I mean, it outpaces my Alpha Vector. 
It outpaces my little uh, exotic ship. It doesn't even come anywhere close in speed and power to my sentinel ship. My sentinel ship is still far better than this ship. Um, as we said. Let's, uh, let's just call in the old Nexus quickly because I can swap ships in the Nexus. And I'll just show you my sentinel ship. We'll just do a stats comparison like freaking top trumps, people. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, jumps are looking behind me here. Damage potential, 440. Shield strength, 387. Hyperdrive range, 16k. Maneuverability, 15k. Okay, so that's pretty much where we are with that. If I bring in my sentinel ship right now, and we check out the stats of my sentinel ship. Okay, so the damage potential, 568. Okay, so my last one was 400 and something. Shield strength, my new ship is actually better. My new ship, the, the Starborn Runner, has actually got better shields than my Sentinel ship. I mean, there's my shields here, and I haven't put them on any of the boosted slots, whereas I did boost the shields, I believe, in my other ship. Then, what have we got over here? We've got hyperdrive range of 15k, which my other ship was 16k. Maneuverability, it says here that it's 13k. But you saw on the planet surface that this ship outstripped it in speed by loads. So I honestly don't honestly get the numbers with stuff, you know? So this is why I say I'm not really a mid-maxer and I don't pay much attention to stats. I pay more attention to what it freaking does when it comes to actuality. I mean, it's like I lost my shields fairly quickly in my new ship when I was taking out that Sentinel Dreadnought. This thing takes a lot more punishment, even though it doesn't say the shield strength is as high. So, I honestly feel stats inside this game. You might as well just throw them out the freaking window half the time. It hardly really matters. It. Test your stuff. Test your stuff. If it acts how you want it to act, then you're onto a winner winner chicken dinner. But I, I, I honestly find that the proof is not in the pudding half the time. Yeah, it's not. If you like the look of this ship, use this ship. I'm going to be using it for a little while, I think, on this save. I think it's going to be my main ship until I get a decent central ship on my other save. But for now, I just like it. I, I love all this stuff underneath. I think this is really groovy, all this stuff under here. It sounds like there's some sort of fight or something going on in here, or something weird's going on. Or somebody keeps activating their um, cloaking device. It sounds a bit more like that, actually, doesn't it? Oddness, oddness, odd, stra odd sounds inside of the old Nexus. Yeah, we haven't got the Quicksilver store do anything as yet because we're still waiting for the expedition to fully run its course, which is going to be, what, another two weeks or so. But anyway, people, that's my run through of the Starborn Runner. I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like the Starborn Runner as an all-roundy type ship. But as far as ships go, Hello Games could really do with adding more perks in. It's like the uh, Sentinel ship. I mean, yeah, it's great how it hovers in place. I love that. That's a nice little perk. And the solar ships, I like the fact that you don't have to use their warp fuel so often, you know, because the solar cells recharge them. That's a nice little perk. They need to add little perks like that to all the different ships, but maybe even add in ship missions and make missions specific missions. But it's like um, the Sentinel ship. If I use my economy scanner on my Sentinel ship, it'd be nice if it actually brought me into perhaps... A sentinel pillar or something or if i use the conflict scanner it finds me a sentinel pillar and it's like the uh, the solar ships because they're outlaw ships it'd be nice if on the scanner you could filter to outlaw systems that could work a treat too you know and then if they could just come up with a load of other ship perks that'd be great it's like say like the uh, living ship it'd be nice if that one could actually find you black holes a lot quicker or something or didn't get damaged through black holes and things you know just stuff like that just little mini perks for your ships anyway sound off in the comments let us know what you what you what you think with that idea and any perks you would like to see given to certain types of ships it's like when you're on your freighter you can just install that little counter where it scans the system for you I think it'd be nice if you popped either the economy scanner or the uh, conflict scanner inside of an explorer. It scanned the system for you in the same way as you can from your actual freighter and it scanned all the planets. I think that'd be freaking an awesome perk for the explorer ship. Anyway, like I say, you got any ideas? Put them in the comments. Till next time, people. Salute to Mondo. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.